My name is Francisco Estevez, and I do a little bit of everything. Turn out, turn out, plie, plie, turn in. Um, it's all arts related. I am a freelance uh, professional ballet dancer. I have a photography business that's based in dance. And I'm also a dance instructor in the Denver area. Two alternating legs, five, eight, continue. One, two, three, four, head roll, five, six, seven, eight. Legs out, turn out, legs out, turn out. Finding flow in dance, I guess, would translate to be something more like how do you control your adrenaline in that moment where you're stepping out onto a live stage? You can feel the energy coming from the audience, the lights are on you, and you have that sort of rush. How do you balance that energy that you're getting, that you're getting from the audience? How do you balance that with making sure that you're able to perform all of the things that you've worked for in the studio setting so that your coordination works, the things that you practiced in that sort of calmer context work. And I think that balance is maybe what you would find um, to be what flow is in a dance setting. So I was first diagnosed with testicular cancer in 2013. I felt that something was wrong and so we went in for a regular checkup and 24 hours later I was having surgery to get the mass out and thankfully like that was it. We caught it early enough so that that surgery did the trick. That was 10 years ago. Most recently in 2018 I was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia, CML. I was very much in shock, my whole family, my wife, um, we were very much in shock that I could have been diagnosed with two different types of cancer before I was 30. You know, it's always tough to see the, the person that you care so much about or a person you care so much about going through that. Um, and I felt very strongly that my role was there to support Fran in that journey being that person that was sort of looking for the solutions and looking for ways to make sure that he, he was strong and felt supported. There were times when I was, I would think to myself, what have I done to deserve this twice or deserve it at all? And um, you're allowed to have that human emotional response to it. But for the most part, I, I would say yes, dance definitely not only helped because it was a network, but performing is, is like that as well, right? You're problem solving. Not everything can go exactly as planned. So if something goes wrong, you're in the show setting. So how do you how do you get back on track? That's sort of the mentality that I've I've always had is how do we come out of this in a positive way? Front flex. Feel the back of the knee out through the heel. Back of the knee out through the heel. There's a lot of things that, um, as dancers and as athletes, or even just as people, that we have complete control over. There's many things that we don't, but sort of like that 10% of things that we can control that's within our control, that's not just luck, right place, right time. Those are the things that, you know, work ethic, being on time, being prepared, all those things that have to do with what you can control is what we look for in a dancer. So if you, that's really more than, more than having beautiful legs and feet and being able to turn 10 times. I always believe that it was really important to, to teach while you're dancing because I feel like that is a really great um, way to not only make yourself better as a, as a dancer, but it's really important to keep those ideas fresh and give those back to, to the new generation. You've done the work now to prepare for a variation. Try and really focus on the performance part of it. Typically what happens is if you sort of not let go because you still want to be able to show off your technique, but if you just try and enjoy it, and I'm sure this probably resonates a little bit with what Ariana was talking about, right? Switch shifting that focus from something that's nervous and negative to something that's positive and enjoyable. Remember that you're dancers because you like to dance, right? And we do all this work to get on stage, and if it's really stressful to get on stage, it's almost sometimes not worth it. Right? So you have to find a way to recapture that joy that you had for dance and try and put that on the stage right now because these are opportunities that when you're my age, you're going to look back on and say, man, I wish I'd enjoy that more. Yeah? So 
I learned that later in my career and, and it really helped me dance better and more consistently. So everyone is different. What worked for me is not necessarily going to work for you. But try and implement some of those ideas that you learned about today and really try and focus on just enjoying the process of being on stage and enjoying that experience for yourself. Yeah? Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Here, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Making the transition from being a full-time professional ballet dancer associated with the company to doing something different is never easy. Being a dancer in that setting is all-consuming, like like any other demanding physical activity or profession is. You know, you eat, sleep, and breathe to do that one thing. As a dancer that's away from company life, I have to exercise, like switching back and forth in my both in my body and brain a lot more now. So that has a different type of toll on, on my, on how much I get tired. You know, I left for many different reasons. A lot of it had to do with my family. We started a family uh, during the pandemic. I focused more on my photography, dance photography part of things. So um, I was able to really dive deep into that and explore what that would look like full time during the pandemic. So that was a really um, great thing to be able to, to sort of transition easily to. But that transition is never easy no matter how prepared you are. This is just for uh, a new fine art series that we're doing. We're gonna do prints. We're gonna make prints out of these. I think that if someone's going through a, a really challenging time in their life, I think they just have to give themselves the time and space to have what reaction they're having to it. And whether that's positive or negative, just allow themselves to have that reaction. If you're lucky enough to have a community that you can rely on and lean on and have as a support, don't be afraid to reach out to them. The biggest disservice that we can do to ourselves when we're ever in a crisis or in a challenging situation is to close ourselves up and shut down. That never leads to anything positive. Have that individual reaction, let yourself feel those things, but make a plan. Figure out a way to create a little community of support. When we were going through, especially the leukemia diagnosis, and we saw that community come together, not for me, but for myself and Tracy, and, and to see all of the, the, the positivity that we always hope to put out into the world come back to us in that way was very humbling. Um, and we will forever be grateful for the, the way that the community came to support us.